Okay. Uh, it is Sunday. Yes, it is Sunday. Yes, welcome to this wonderful Sunday. Let's just make sure I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. Vance is unmuted. Fantastic. Those are all of my usual uh, mistakes I make at the beginning of a stream. So today, today I managed to not make them. That's excellent. All right. For those of you who are new to Brunches and Dragons, Brunches and Dragons started out as an experiment. What it has turned into is a fun storytelling exercise. What I do is I, I recruit a human to come tell a story with me. I'm a very collaborative storytelling uh, GM, and so I find people that would like to participate in that exercise. I uh, One of the reasons it started is because a lot of my players really enjoyed the NPCs I would make up on the spot. Now, for those of you that don't know me, I'm autistic and improv, not my forte. So I was really interested in the idea that they loved the NPCs that I had never prepared, that I just sort of popped in. And so I wanted to explore that more. And for Brunches and Dragons, I do not prepare for this. I don't look at the player's character sheet. I don't think up a storyline, nothing. The closest I come to that is I always place these stories in Azinlia, which is a world that I have created and that I use to run three different campaigns. Um, I We will decide either we'll decide together or I'll decide later where this goes in the timeline. Um, and the other constant is I come up, I usually try to come up with a magical item somewhere in there. Um, I, that started because I wanted to annoy a friend of mine who uh, thinks I make ridiculous, uh, overpowered magical items, but I think they're fun storytelling devices. So now it's just sort of a habit. I'm finding it really, it's, it's a challenge for me. So for me, it's a challenge to both improv and come up with uh, stuff on the spot, magical stuff on the spot. Uh, for, hopefully for the player, it's just a fun storytelling exercise. Um, so I met this player uh, through a friend of mine. I believe you're actually related to that friend of mine. Um, so this is going to be very exciting for me because I actually don't know this human very well at all. We've had a couple of conversations, which I have thoroughly enjoyed. But other than that, I've never played with you. So I think it's going to be interesting yeah, to see what kind of stories you make. Thank you. So uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. So um, my name is Hunter. I am uh, the brother of Lee, who was on this stream before. Um, I'm really excited because Lee introduced me to Spoon here and essentially talked about these one-on-one -on -one D and D sessions and chances to build characters. And I've been DMing for Fifth Edition D and D for about five or six years now. Oh, nice. Um, and yeah, and it. I never really, the characters I get to make are usually contained within my mind or the fleeting experiences that, uh, you know, my PCs have with them because like you, they always seem to like the characters I make up on the spot much more. Yeah. So, um, I can never tell, I'm excited. I can never tell whether yeah. the characters we make up on the spot are better or they just like that face the GM makes when they're like, ah, uh, it's a <laughs> tall, skinny guy, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> Something about it. I, I think there's definitely an element of that, that like somehow the ones you make on the spot are the ones that uh, this, you can tell the characters have a have a part in creating. Yes. And so they're definitely invested in those characters because they're sort of made up from so from the spontaneity of the game. Yeah. Anyways, um, I was very excited uh, to get a chance to explore a character, but I really, really struggled uh, with which character I was going to make. Um, I had a couple in my back pocket that I've thought of for a while but none of them really felt right and then actually it was um lee who came to me and was going to do her own little one-shot adventure and recommended that myself and my so get in on it and uh we were pretty excited so we got to collaborate on this character concept together and thus was born vance and it's a great character that i've really been able to implement new things before that i haven't been able to do with other characters and so I'm really excited to sort of tell this collaborative story with you, Spoon, and, and figure out a bit more about where Lee comes from, or uh, Vance comes from. Sorry. Yeah, I'm very excited <laughs> about that as well, because often um, I play, uh, a lot of my earlier players were people that just have, like, PCs just sitting on a shelf, ready for something someday. Right. Um, and I, yeah. I did notice that instead of, uh, instead of telling a, a fuller-fledged story, I end up building people's backstories occasionally i'll get a uh, somebody that somebody uh I've, I'll, I'll get somebody that brings in a character that they've either played before or they you know they want to make a backstory for or they've played in other campaigns and we get to either explore side stuff or it's an alternate reality i did want to mention that uh, right. because you're this is a character specifically in another campaign um uh, I have a mechanic in Azinlia built for one, uh, two of the players that 
uh, needed to be able to to skip sessions fairly regularly. Mm-hmm. Um, the 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 NPC is called the mistress, and she she messes with time and space and and feelings. So if at any point you you want to go back to Lee, and you have to have this conversation with your GM, and I I will support you or or but I will mostly support their decision. Um, if you want to go back to them and be like, this is an alternate timeline, maybe bring in some of the elements, fine. If I give you a magical item and Lee's like, no, I don't want you to use that, you have to trust your GM. I just, I'm just going right. to say that. That's that's up to them, okay? Totally. <laughs> and I finally got the name right, Azimlia. So I was I was writing it down as you were saying it before, and I'm like, okay, cool, Azimlia. This is a, a fun uh, name. Yes. alternate world. And I, and I yes. certainly, alternate this world. character exists in that world. And yeah. There, there is, yeah alternate plane where I do, I do uh, wibbly wobbly stuff with, with magic and, and other stuff. Uh, I, I make up timey wimey stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fun fact. A lot of the, the city names and stuff are pulled from maps around where I live. And so where I used to live, all of the street names were after flowers. And so as in, I oh, didn't, cool. yeah, I didn't want to name the whole world after a flower. So I just messed with, uh, uh, a flower name and actually a very good friend of mine named their kid that and so I get confused all oh. the time and I call her a Zinlia a lot. <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> that's uh that's really cool. Actually one of yeah. the most premier cities in my campaign setting is called Amaranth. Well so there, you, there go. you go. Yeah exactly. So. You know you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Flowers make for great names. They Come really on. do. <laughs> They're really good names, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, I also really enjoy playing with another GM because I find that we don't get to be players often, and I think we bring a, an interesting dynamic to it a lot. So this, I think, this will be quite a bit of fun. Um, and I okay, so. and I see Lee is actually in chat, so uh, hopefully she hey. enjoys what we do with this. <laughs> okay, uh, why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit about Vance? Sure. So um, Vance has sort of developed again out of a. Uh, a originally a world that Lee had created, uh, but it's a it's a sort of steampunk theme that is not mm. foreign to very to many campaign settings. Mm-hmm. Um, so Vance is in his upper twenties. He's a uh, just from a meta mechanic standpoint, he's mm-hmm. a half work fighter. Mm-hmm. Um, but what really defines his sort of unique qualities and his outlook on life come from his background, which is highly centered around his family. Mm. So. Uh, Vance Mordon comes the, from the Mordon clan, which is this family that I had envisioned that earned a sort of lesser noble or uh, sort of maybe not noble title, but sort of a clan or guild uh, title about a century ago. Um, essentially, they started to collect a lot of information about what, I guess, society considers monsters or these sentient beings that don't live nicely within the confines of how society and civilization is defined in a particular setting. Nice, okay. And so they started to collect an independent compendium and a lot of information and make a lot of measurements and really make a direct, sort of implementing the direct physical sciences into these things. Mm, um, awesome. A lot of times these these creatures are studied through a, a lens of arcane or magic, but the Mordan family proved themselves to be capable with more feats of engineering um, and being able to apply complex mathematics to these uh, various individuals. <clears throat> I am also a, uh, a student of the, of the physical sciences, so clearly there's an influence of, of that. Oh, in real life. life. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's I, awesome. Yeah, I'm in the process of getting my PhD right now, so it's, it's a fun way to oh. fix some of that creativity through this character. Oh, well. that's really interesting. I love it when people do this because you'll actually bring in uh, potentially real science. We won't hold you to it, of course, but I, I always, I always <laughs> well, love yeah. that, you know, like um, I, I, um, I'm trying to get somebody on here who's a, a history buff and I think it would be really fun to do like a historical oh, fiction gosh. type thing. I love doing uh, literal science fiction. I think that's quite fun. So this will be neat. Um, uh, okay. So I think I've captured that. What, uh, what else can you tell me about this family? I have a million questions, but I want to make sure that you tell yes, me what definitely. you want to tell me first. So this is sort of the broad overview, but, um, over the next generation or two, the, uh, family expanded the compendium substantially and were able to record a, a number and make measurements on a number of different monsters that were previously, uh, less well-known maybe. <clears throat> um, but it became clear that there were large gaps in the compendium. Um, whether it be because these creatures were particularly rare or in areas that were very difficult to uh, travel to, 
so there were very few other recorded accounts or whatever information that was known about these creatures was being guarded by other organizations. Mm. So um, along came essentially Vance's grandfather who had started to, who got, kind of got bit by the adventuring bug and said, if we're going to get this information, we need to go get it ourselves. And right now we've just kind of been a collection of scholars and people who, you know, go through other people's data. So, oh, okay. So along came Vance's grandfather and he utilized the sort of tinkering specialties of this family and their sort of fascination with invention and, and sort of uh, engineering. And he applied that to how individuals protect themselves and, you know, with respect to armor and weapons and things like that. Okay. And he pioneered this sort of um, what I kind of loosely term like a tinker knight. And these are, you know, individuals who can use a variety, are trained in martial combat, a variety of ways, but will create their own armaments to induce various effects and have and things. And he only really got off the ground with it very lightly, but it, it did enough to sort of uh, inspire and, or at least make him well known as an eccentric of the family. Okay. That makes sense because did... other family members were more closed off and, and he liked to go out and explore and meet people and, uh, you know, expand his horizons in that respect. Okay. So let me see if I got this right. So the family is more sc scholastic rather than, than the yes. adventuring type until we get to Vance's mm -hmm. grandfather. Vance wanted to, right. to go out and collect the data, wanted to go out uh, and have the interactions with the creatures rather than reading a book about it. Is that about right? Exactly. Exactly. And that's dangerous. And, it, it, yes. Um, and so know. because of the danger, he uh, he took the natural inclinations of the family along those tinkering and engineering lines and became really good at engineering his own protective equipment. Now, did you say Tinker, exactly. tinker Knight, like K-N-I-G-H-T or Tinker? K-N, yeah. Or Tinker yeah, It's sort knife. of a loose term I'd augment. Yeah, Knight. Knight, K -N -I -G -H -T. okay. K-N-I-G-H-T. Got it. All right. Yeah. I find that really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. And from uh, my perspective, there's a fun element I've found as a player, um, because as a DM, I like projects, and I like long game uh, goals. Mm -hmm. So as a player, I find I like the same things. And what that tinkering allows me to do, uh, it allows me to invest in long-term projects and allows my creativity through that character to sort of flourish and go, what if I wanted to do this? How would that work? Um, I have an artificer okay. in another campaign that does the same thing. He's got long plans. Go. I don't bother to keep yep. track of them because he will always tell me when it's important. We have an agreement yep. that yep. Um, when he brings stuff up in a session, it's not, it is a surprise, but I just roll with it. It's, I've learned a lot about mm -hmm. rolling with surprises from him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And as a courtesy to your DM, I recommend if you do that, I, what I do with other characters like that, I, uh, I, I make sure I keep a record. I have a notebook. That oh, I you have like, to. This is what I was trying to do. Yeah. And this was the role that I got for it. And this was the information I found out from that role. And you just keep detailed notes about it. He and I also um, have an agreement that if he makes something that's too OP, we can change it. <laughs> absolutely. And that's with any kind of homebrew content. I think um, d and 5e in particular was designed for homebrew. It's, yes. It's um, a lot of people I know on the internet when I read through blogs or I listen to um, panels or things like that, they may get frustrated that certain rules are not very well defined or constricted in 5e, but I think that's obviously one of its strengths. Yes. Is that it, um, it can be. It, it yeah. allows for that customization. So um, I also have a brain for kind of mechanics and tinkering in that mm -hmm. respect. I really oh, like yeah. so thinking is... about these things and yeah. Uh, I'm also a person who thinks fun is borders, right? So if you draw strict lines for yourself and you don't make this thing OP, um, I will say specifically in this context, but I, if you don't make things OP and you make it sort of more underpowered, it can, you get creative oh, uses for it. Right, and, right. Okay. Yeah, so you, you limit your um, own creation so that it doesn't just solve all problems because the problems exactly. can be interesting. Yeah, okay, good. Yeah, well, I'm not the problem the is the interesting thing, exactly. Well, um, I'm, I'm trying to think of what to do with Vance. I wonder, is there something in your backstory that you'd like to explore more to affect the campaign that you're in? Would you like to go off on a, a side quest? Like, uh, to you, you mentioned these creatures a lot. Is Vance, did Vance inherit the grandfather's travel bug? Is he using his grandfather's tools and trying to, to live in that vein? Does he, do you want to go find a creature and explore that? Or what are you thinking? Exactly. And so um, what I actually want to explore, so Vance, as you said, got bit by the travel bug. And um, 
I knew I didn't want to make it to where he invented this sort of method of, of this tinker night method all by himself. I wanted there to be family inspiration that he is picking up a legacy that his grandfather started. But I also, uh, and you and I spent have talked about this before, I realized with any D and D character I had made before, siblings were never a big part of their lives. Oh, that's right. And, yes. And uh, I thought that was really tragic. I was like, there's no way I, um, I have, three siblings and they've all had a massive impact on my life and they continue mm. to this day. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I want to make sure in this D and D character mm -hmm. in this session that siblings are an important part of their lives. And so I uh, have it to where Vance is one of seven. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> he is the uh, second oldest of those. And um, I want him to have a particularly strong relationship with one of his siblings. Um, okay. He has loose relationships with others, and because when you are one of seven, you have quite the age gap, typically, that yeah. splits you between. And I think anybody who comes from, you know, I will say that there is a different league between four siblings and seven siblings. Oh, sure, um, but, but you there's know an that... age gap between the first and the fourth, yeah. And there's cliques that form within your sibling oh, sort yeah. of dynamics, right? Yeah. So I essentially wanted Vance... To not be the only one who got bit by this adventuring bug, but it would be cool if Vance um, has a sister that he feels in kindred spirit with. Um, she, it would be the fifth oldest in this line, or so, third youngest. And um, she similarly got bit by the travel bug, but instead of augmenting this uh, applying this tinkering method to this sort of fighting martial prowess, this physical strength. Um, I had made a point with his family that they were not particularly magically gifted. And I don't know how magic exactly works in your role, and this is an opportunity for um, um, opening up for a collaboration here. I love magic. Um, yeah, it's awesome. And I I'd envisioned his family that while they're very intelligent people, that somehow the arcane or that side of, uh, of magic had never really made its way into their bloodline or they never took, they, they poured their efforts into other things, more of the physical sciences. Okay. So um, I would love for her, his sister, if she was one of the, she was somebody who was the first to get bit by this magic bug. Yes, I love that. And that sounds awesome. So she's able to actually, she's starting to pioneer this new sort of technomancy where like the artificer, right? You're able to blend tinkering and magic, and she's taking that route. So they both have these these goals that are um, sort of tangential to one another, and they they are they are kindred in that respect. I love it. And um, yeah, I love this character. Um, these are these are the kinds of characters I tend to play a lot. Um, I, I started out right. with Shadowrun, so Technomancy was my very first character of all time in any TTRPG forever. Then that's very good. So, yeah, yeah, that's. Um, I, yeah. It's something I'm not wholly familiar with, so this is going to be exciting. Uh, so um, one of the things that I, Spoon, am very interested in are different magic systems. So I will read a very mm -hmm. terrible book just to uh, learn about the magic system in the book. Um, I actually have a pet cam up um, down here in this bottom corner. Um, the black cat that's licking his head right now is uh, Dr. Aegon, and he is my familiar. The tiny cat with white feet that's in there bothering him is Septima. She's not my familiar. She just bothers everybody. So if she gets <laughs> if she gets too pushy, you'll see me reach in and take her. Yeah, it's happening right now. <laughs> Wait. Uh, she gets a little, yeah. So um, uh, I really love magic systems. The way the one in this world is is forming currently, I'm I'm a, imagining there's going to be several different systems by the end of all of this. But there's mm -hmm. um, one of the things I do is I got really um, overwhelmed with the school of magic systems when I first started DM yeah. DMing D and D, and so I started describing uh, the effects of detect magic as colored glows like auras. And gotcha. um, I have a cheat sheet now that I use from the Alpine DM uh, that tells me the schools of magic, but it's never one or, or another. I blend things a lot. Um, so oh, I, nice, I, nice. I use the language of the schools as a way of getting on the same page with my players who might be more familiar with it, but I'll, yeah. I'll temporize a lot. So for example, in yesterday's campaign, they did detect magic on something where the aura was really tight to the object that was magicked. And so that mm. it, I told them that that indicated that it was a very precise kind of magic to, to just have that very thin bare line aura. So um, 
uh, yeah, I'm very interested and I'm very open to the idea of their, of you and I discussing a completely new kind of magic system today or not. It's, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> exactly. Um, okay. So I love the idea of this sister. Um, you said you're second, she's third from the, so there's, I also love that there are seven siblings because I am like seven spoon and seven is one of my favorite numbers. Hey, there you go. Yes. So that, <laughs> that pleases me greatly. Um, occasionally I'll have a player come in and be like, my outfit is purple because they understand that purple is my favorite color. So I know you didn't do that, but I, I, I like the, the symmetry there. Um, so you've got, I'm not good at math. So you've got two or three siblings in between you. What's the age gap? Is it very um, large or you would have... closer? I would say the age gap, since there's two siblings between, mm -hmm. um, the age gap is probably close to, hey, you know what, let's keep it consistent, seven years. Seven, okay, great, love it. Uh, seven year age gap. That's quite significant. I myself am um, seven years from my, or six years from my baby sister. So that can, uh, my biological mm. baby sister. So that can be quite the age gap there, seven. It okay, yeah. so let's see. Would you have gone out adventuring before this sister got to the age where she could go out adventuring? I ask because I'm thinking maybe you come back home to visit family and the sister, which we will have to give a name to, um, is like, take me with you when you go back out again. Does that sound like something right. we could explore today? It does. And it's definitely, um, I could see that when they were younger, that... Vance would have this protective older brother feeling mm -hmm. over his sister, um, but very quickly recognize that they are indeed their own strong-willed person and more than capable of taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so I can imagine that at the stage that Vance is now, which he's in his, I think I have him in his upper 20s. Yeah, that's around what you like said. 28. Yeah. So she'd be a 21-ish, um, yeah. She'd be in her, in her early 20s, and that would be um, a an extremely sufficient age for someone to be very grown up if yeah. that makes sense yeah in this world um, so sure. i don't really do, yeah i don't want there to be a feeling of like he's always got to take this protective posturing over here um mm -hmm. and that there is a a sort of respect between the two of them as sort of these independent scholars who explore these different means of um both research and uh applied research so <laughs> i like it Okay, so let's say, what do we want to name this individual? That's a good question. It took me a while to settle on uh, Vance, and I'm and I'm open for suggestions. The last name, like Mordon, I tend to want to, um, you know, I like uh, names that sound good, names that have some kind of uh, I have cadence a, to it. I have a channel reward um, uh, for channel points. If they have enough channel points, they can use the name generator and they are the name generator they can submit a name i don't know if anybody that's following me has that many points but um could be interesting you don't have to use it if anybody decides to do it but i like the idea of a, ca a cadence vance mordain sounds really interesting yeah. so would the sister do you think all the kids have a one syllable first name for instance it would be fun consistency mm -hmm. uh certainly would be difficult to pull off um you know could do something like a similar first letter so mm -hmm. you know she could be Vera um Vera Mordain that that works I like that yeah I think I think we can definitely go with Vera for now I okay that would be uh let's use that okay so let's say um what if we said well do we want to tell a story around do we want to explore the conversation you'd have with that sister when you came home again and she wanted to go to go out on her first adventure? Or do you think that's already happened and you're heading towards this creature maybe you've never heard of, but she really wants to get a closer look at? What are you thinking? Yeah, I think it would be interesting if she had come across something, you know, maybe while Vance was gone and, and was on his sort of one of his adventures and one of his own, you know, he had embarked on something she had a she had come across something that people hadn't I, if people had come across it yet I, I want her to have I guess something unique that she could bring to the table that yeah. would essentially mean when he comes home and she says hey look at this thing um I have this new tool and I think we're able we'd be able to 
uh, we'd be able to acquire it, study it. You know, I, I, I also like to make a point with this family too, that they're, they don't go and butcher things, you know, that's oh, not yeah. their no. job. And in fact, one of the things that um, is set up in the other campaign that he's in that this sort of, there's a, a butting of heads is that this family hires him to as essentially as a bounty hunter, um, which he doesn't like, but they have presented an intriguing target. And so his, his idea is I'm, I can go and see what this target is without taking it down. And so that's kind of how he works his right. angle. It's not about killing um, it. It's about removing it from this problem or something like that. Yeah. If there's, if there's a, if, if it is threatening people, if it is causing problems, that is, um, a, they will accept the work to remove it, but they will not like, you know, you don't go to butcher things, right? They're not. Yeah. Butchers. I've got another player like that in a campaign. I haven't done much with it, but this might give me some ideas on something I could do with that group. Um, yeah. So what do you think she's discovered? And I almost I feel like we're exploring more of yours character than yours, but I, I think we need to if we're going to have that close relationship. Sorry about that, though. No, I, I think it's great, and I think you got to follow where these where these stories go. Yeah. I think um, I think this is something that maybe, and to tie it back to him as well, in his studies, you know, the way that mechanically Vance works is that he's a sort of high-intelligence character mm -hmm. despite being a fighter. So this is something that he's come across himself, and... Um, Maybe I put it as a project on the back burner to mm -hmm. eventually be able to obtain. Um, so I think this is where your knowledge of technomancy might come in. You know, is this idea is, is there some sort of creature, maybe it's an automaton, maybe it's something that um, it itself specifically applies technomancy and thus not much has been able to be understood about it previously. But now, with Vera's specialty in this regard, or this this budding specialty, um, she thinks she knows either where it's hiding or how to how to break into the vault that it is sealed in. Um, that kind of thing, you know. I have a tie-in for you. Um, cool. Don't don't feel like you need to to care about this, but um, have you ever heard of Modrons? They're out of. Uh, Forgotten realms. Yeah, they're from the. Yeah, they're from the plane of a. Um, that that giant. Clockwork plane, right? So yeah, uh... something like that. What if Vera discovered one of these in? Um, I imagine mm -hmm. your, your family does a bit of um, antiquing for things they can cobble together mm -hmm. and, and repurpose. What if um, yep. she has gone out and found one of these and she's made it work again, but it's trying. As soon as she activated it, it immediately tried to get to go somewhere. And she yeah. wants to follow yeah. it. How does that sound? That sounds, that's awesome. That now, is perfect. I am um, not going to tell you on stream where it ties in, but I will share with you, is hang out with me after the stream a little bit. I'll share with you where it is there so you, so, so you have that bit of fun. But I don't want to ruin nice. it for any of my players that might be watching. I've got a player that watches uh, a lot of my streams, and I don't know if they're in here, so I'm not going to tell you, but in case Tyler's <laughs> here, but... Um, Sorry. And Luth is in several of my campaigns, so you don't get to know either. Nice. That's my husband, not Luth Era. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So do you want to have, have already started out, or do you want to have this conversation with her where she shows you this? I think we can... Uh... I would like to see, that would be fun to role play out what Vance does when he sees a Modron. Got it. Um, okay. So that All right. would be cool. So you're home for a holiday. Well, okay. let's call it the harvest holiday. Um, okay. Your, uh, are both your parents alive still? Yes. Is your mom the type that's always in the kitchen or is she bossing around an older sister or something like that? <laughs> is she very welcoming? Is um, she more? Is she more of a things must be done a specific way what, what are we looking at for mom i think she's very um i think she's very not very nurturing if that not to not to say that that's a bad thing but she handles a large house she's not this and she does her own scholarly work as well i think her and uh vance's father have always been more of the research types and you know, had yeah. so many siblings in a way so they could take care of themselves you know um you also mentioned that this was a lesser noble house, so it's possible they've also got like a housekeeper and stuff. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, These so. These people would serve as more nurturing figures. 
Got it. And I, I imagine that the servants and, and um, are more like family, could be family, actually, and yes. uh, look upon yeah. the family of scholars and tinkerers and adventurers with sort of fond dismay at the messes they make and the, the, the flights of fancy they go on. Does this sound reasonable? That seems fun. Yeah, yeah, okay. that seems fun. Um, so when you get home, you're, uh, as you, as you come in horse in the stable, usual stable master, usual interaction there, you get into the house, um, the housekeeper's there to greet you and she comments on how fine you've grown and it's been too long and all of that usual thing. And she, her last comment is that Vera wanted to see you. So you know that Vera's home. And she says, uh, she also comments that you're the last of the seven. So the, the festivities can now really begin. She'll make sure dinner tonight is particularly good, blah, blah, blah. I always love that salted pork. So if you can get a little bit of that, that would be great. Uh, as a, uh, so, uh, what would she call you? Uh, Master Vance, of course we have salt pork for you. Um, and your brother loves it as well. So it had to be. And your father, of course we have salt pork. So she, she babbles on about that for a while. She's a talker. Yep. yep. And Vance is a very uh, sort of goal oriented so he has places he uh he he likes to go and likes to be mm -hmm. so he will uh he will he will politely entertain her but uh only for as soon as he can get out of the conversation yeah she <laughs> she understands she's the kind of babbler that like go on and do your thing but keeps talking to the air kind of thing she's always talking exactly. to <laughs> yeah perfect um well i imagine vance is uh <clears throat> probably his armor's a bit uh stinking so vance to a visual description of him. He's yeah. um, certainly not a, a, a handsome half-orc by any means. <laughs> okay. He's a bit more lean than the typical one that comes along. He um, he uh, is just shy of six feet and uh, has this sort of more angular instead of a square jawline that's kind of constantly covered in stubble, and especially after he's been traveling on the road for a while. So he would have these sort of kind of grown out messy mutton chops with a bit of scraggly beard and things or scraggly stubble on his chin and on his uh, mustache. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a uh, sports and impressive pair of tusks that come right about up to here on his face. And mm -hmm. uh, he's got this scar that runs so not above down his the nose. right side of his face. The tusks come mm -hmm. to just below his nose, correct? That's right. Yeah. yeah okay. Exactly. Sorry. And sorry, you were saying something about a scar? And he has a scar that he had, he had acquired from one of his first, uh, outgoings as a, as a budding adventurer and he sort of runs along the, the right side of his face there uh pretty much from the eyebrow down to just below the cheekbone um he's got this Very sort of wild story. blown but his, his his skin color is more of a sort of for uh where the half horse goes it doesn't have that gray tone it's much more of the like sort of light green and light light yellow uh tone mm -hmm. and um he's got these sort of deep set very like dark brown eyes and this almost dark, very dark brown, almost black hair that seems wild and blown back and it's being currently held back by a set of goggles that he essentially just keeps up and uh, holds it back at, uh, at most times so it stays out of his face. Um, he uh, seems to be wearing essentially a trench coat, brown, dirty, so you've clearly seen a lot of travel lately. Mm -hmm. um, but the sleeves below the elbow are cut off and you see these two what I imagine to be, uh, if, if, if this is all right with you, very these custom-made um, pieces of, of his work that he's worked on for quite a while. Oh, great, yeah. Continuously augments. Uh, one of them is actually a deployable shield, one that he just kind of hits a panel on the back and this sort of, uh, you know, disc sort of emerges from it or a pillar that spins and then re resumes it, results in a disc. That oh, that's very cool. The, um, the one on the right is... Highly Mandalorian inspired, I must say, but it's got it's a grappling hook that's essentially coiled very tightly into uh, the bottom part of the uh, wrist guard, and so that way, when he presses a plate on the back of that, the grappling hook can shoot out and he can grapple terrain or whatever he might be trying to stop from moving at the time. Love it. Now, um, I I do not mind yeah. either of those things. If Lee minds. You, but it, today I, I completely those enjoy were, this. Yeah, <laughs> those were in uh, her. her she's one already, shot she's and already agreed. Lot, All right, just it was a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, um, she would have or uh, she would have me roll tinkering checks every time before I used one, because to see if it worked. Characters, yeah. exactly. Other characters uh, had to, you know, you spend an hour in the morning doing their various things, and I was like, well, I would be pretty cool if part of that ritual in the morning 
Vance is tuning all his little equipment that he's got, and this represents that tinkering check in the morning he takes to make sure his equipment is working properly. Oh, is that so. what she is that what she was commenting on about earlier? She she said the the morning prep sessions determining DCs. Is that that you're determining DCs yeah. for your checks later? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Exactly. That's exactly. very cool. I like that. I, I might have to borrow that that idea. That's that's a really neat it, idea. It, it was it was hers and it was a lot of fun. There was a part where I was leaping from one skyship to another. Mm -hmm. And maybe Vance is even telling his sister this story. Actually, yeah, yeah. Be right that would be perfect. Comes back from this skyborne adventure. Okay, perfect. And, yeah, uh, she's she's yeah. Uh, she's in her room. She's she has her own uh, tinker station, like a, a table where she's no. she's uh, working on something. And as you come in, she covers it and sees it's you and looks like she wants to say something, but then sort of you know puts on the hello brother it's nice to see you how were your adventures and you launch straight into the story say does that sound right yeah i think okay. i think exactly i think he gets really excited and and he's uh you know he's a he's somewhat perceptive uh mm -hmm. he has he's in his words he has his days but he looks at he looks at her and goes oh well you don't you don't have to share with me what you're working on there little sparrow but i got a great story for you um and he launches into this story about, well, I was leaping from one skyship to another because we were boarded by pirates on our way between Baldur's Gate and, you know, wherever in that Azimlia we are. Um, and it uh, looks like I didn't quite check my jump boots quite well enough. And you can see maybe one of the heels is kind of uh, busted on it. Yeah. And, um, seems like the right one went off a little stronger than the left one. And thankfully, I was able to compensate midair, but... It almost resulted in a very, very long fall to a to a, to a very deep swim. So uh, <laughs> just remember, just remember that little sparrow. You always have to double check your equipment. So speaking of which, uh, what do you got going on back there? Uh, she she has sort of like put an elbow over, um, uh, you know, like any any late teens, early twenties person trying to cover what they're working on, and she sighs and says, "We'll close the door," and. Um, she she uncovers it fairly carefully and then um what you're looking at is um a sphere about probably i'm really bad at um saying how big stuff is visually so i say things like about the size of a bread box or once i said the back end of a bulldog and i'll never live it down we're gonna say <laughs> it's it's probably it's bigger than a softball right it's um okay it's maybe got a an eight inch diameter it's this big. Yeah. Gotcha. Wow. <laughs> and um, it's it's got a um, uh, it's got it, it's it's on her desk uh, with these stubby little wings coming out of the back, and it's mm. got um, another sort of half dome on the top, uh, and it seems to be made out of metal, but a peculiar metal that has sort of a. Um, a, uh, a like a pink shine to it it's also got spindly oh. little what look like arms and legs but they look very spindly like it wouldn't hold it up if it were standing and uh she says um i've been repairing this little guy what... where did you uh where did you find this one it looks like some kind of uh i don't know small automaton or maybe you wind it up and it'll flutter off in a direction Actually, it's got a power source. Well, uh, okay, so you remember old man? Um, what are we going to call old man? Looking at... You know old man castings? Um, oh, of course, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, I was, I was just poking around there. Um, he runs the, the... It's like a flea market, an indoor flea market. Uh, you can find all kinds of oh, bits yeah, and bobs yeah, in yeah. there. She said, I was, I was looking for something for Ma. She needed some test tube, specific kind of glass, whatever. And I ran across this little guy. Yeah. Um, he was super beat up. I've actually bushed out, uh, bushed, um, buffed out a lot of the, um, the, the scuffs and scrapes and stuff. And, um, yeah. this mechanism and she pushes on the half dome and it flips up and you can see a mechanical eye and then she lets go oh. and, it, and it closes. And she says, I've repaired that. I've taken them completely apart and put them all back together again. There's a crystal inside, um, Oh. And I've I've been I've been tinkering with it, and honestly, I don't know what I did. But one day, it started to pulse, and then um, over time, the pulsing grew. And then you see, and she she's got goggles as well. And she flips those down, yeah. and she she motions for you to do that. 
And she says, mm-hmm. now watch. And she picks up, she picks him up and then puts a finger underneath and seems to hit a, like a, a button or a depression. And, and then she lets go really quickly and there's a burst of pink light. And it's kind of a, like a, um, I want you to imagine a, sorry, words are difficult today. Mm-hmm. Pastel, like a pastel color mm. and, and almost mm. like an after image. It's not something that is visible just when you're looking at mm. it, but more out of like the corner of your eye. But for a moment, it's all yeah. you can see um, for this figure. And then when you blink and you look again, um, it's standing up on those spindly little legs. Its eyes open. The wings have, uh. have collapsed. And he's got his spindly little arms on what would be hips if a sphere had hips. And she says, oh, see? And she flips her, she flips her, um, her goggles back up and she says, yeah, so I got him, I got him working. But if, uh, just watch. And she sort of like keeps you back right. to not touch him. And, um, mm-hmm. she says, now just watch what he does. I have to keep him turned off, but watch. Okay. He looks around. He looks up at Vera. He looks up at you. He makes a sort of like mechanical chuckle noise. And then he tries to walk away. And she catches him before he gets off the desk and she puts him back up and he keeps walking off the desk in the exact same direction. He sort of does an orienting thing where he like does this and then is like, like a Roomba. And, um, she says, now watch if I just let him go. I, he fell off once. I know this won't hurt him. It's, it's a very distressing noise, but just watch. So she lets him go. Uh He, he does not try to like jump off the table and land on his legs. He just walks into space crashes into the floor it makes the most oh. amazing noise it's like somebody chucked a couple of symbols down the stairs you do not expect that kind of noise from something this small <laughs> he he puts all of his thing apart? she wow. goes yeah it's amazing i had to replace some parts too so i'm not sure i got it particular like all together correctly because he was missing all kinds of things like that arm and she starts to go into the mechanics of it while she's while she's explaining these things it, it has walked into the wall and it just keeps walking into the wall And she says, I I took him outside once and he'll continue in the same direction. We got all the way to the edge of town. Um, I did it at night so no one could see because, you know, because this isn't normal. Like automatons are not not the norm in this town necessarily. Machinery, sure. But something that looks like a like a piece of machinery that can walk and and potentially talk on its own. That's not that's not normal. People in this town probably wouldn't react badly, but it would cause comment. And I think, um, what do you say to Vera trying to sort of avoid comment, right? There might be some, some, yeah, some totally. more outgoing members of the, of the, of the family, but let's say she's quiet. She tries to keep the yeah. stuff she does. It's not secretive, but she doesn't want any fuss. Sure. So she explains yeah, exactly. she did this at night. And um, she says, so I have to keep him turned off. She walks over and she pushes uh, directly center to the the eye that's on the front, straight through the sphere on the back. She pushes in on a piece of metal that is naked to the the eye until you push in. And it's a short depression. And he just falls Uh to the ground. And you see that pink glow fade until it's that um, just sort of a... um, like a, like an oil slick on the metal. And the metal is kind of a brass color. It's a very interesting uh, right. color. Um, and she puts him back on the desk. And she looks at you and she takes a deep breath. And and then she goes, no. And, and you can tell um, she, want, she wants to say something, but she's, she's not going to. So she's, never mind. And she turns back to the guy and starts, like, taking off one of his arms or something. So first of all, whenever you... Uh... Turn him off like that. How, how many times have you done that? He doesn't seem to seem to put up a fight or anything. Just kind of lets you pick him up. She says, "No, yeah, um, uh, he he doesn't at all. You can pick him up, and all he does when you set him down is head off in that direction." I mean, what do you say we follow him? She looks like you see a, a look of surprise, and then like a look of like excitement, and she's like, "Oh, well, I, I, I don't, I don't know, Vance. He." I really think he's going to go forever. I left him on and he, uh, for a while and he went, he was walking to that wall for a week before I turned him off and he wasn't slowing down. I don't know how far away this would take us. And I don't know what mom would say. And I've never been out on my own before. And I, I don't know. I've wanted to follow him for weeks. You've been gone forever. And this is the, the, I, the I little know. sister I'm to big sorry. brother. It was, uh, you know, it's funny. This, um, uh... <clears throat> It's interesting you find this automaton. I actually met one in person, not just a, uh, not just a little guy like this, but full fledged. I thought she was, uh, thought she was elvish at first, but you know, I wish you were there to meet her, Vera. You'd have loved her. She, 
it's a similar thing. You know, I might be able to work with all these gadgets and gears, but she used some sort of fluid that had probably these magical properties and she could, well, here she could change the, the, the metallic components of her metal to, to assume various shapes. It's like the, the metal became fluid. It was amazing. Um, you'll have to meet her. I'll have to introduce you to her one day. She's, uh, well, she's pretty incredible. I, um, well, anyways, it's, uh, she is so like excited. Anything. She's so excited. She's like, Oh my God, please tell me everything. Wow. Well, and you see, and Vance proceeds to tell her about this, uh, this mysterious, uh, bounty that he had been hired to acquire. And, um, he said it had come from a family that, that was less than reputable. Uh, but he was curious about their descriptions of, of a metallic beast that seemed to be prowling the streets and was, um, according to them, uh, killing innocents and, and seemed to have this insatiable hunger. And then, but I swear, Vera, when I met her, it's not what she was at all. She, oh. in fact, it seemed like this family had sort of uh, set us up and was trying to take out something that they considered a threat to themselves, but wasn't really a threat to their community. Well, God, this anyhow. This is so cool. Yeah, okay. Um, I, uh, I, I know you'll get a chance to meet her one day. She's, uh, she reminds me a lot of you in a lot of ways. She's um, she's anyhow. so excited. Every time you come home and you tell about adventures, Vera is one of the one of the only children that really is following along those same lines. If if you're okay with that, I think I think the rest of them are yes, probably yeah. scholastic, um, more scholastic. Yeah. And I think I think yeah. the adventure bug skipped a generation, so it was your grandfather and then you and now Vera. Yeah. I think probably both your yeah. parents are more the scholastic side. Um, <laughs> The comments and chatter are amusing. Your sister said, I sent Spoon coming to visit our second shot. I got really excited, and Luthera said, I'm surprised she hasn't exploded already. I I adore steampunk stuff in a way that is is stupid in a lot of uh, a lot of realms, so I'm very excited about this story we're telling. Anyway, so uh, she's always very interested, but she's particularly interested in this, and you're a little surprised because you have been gone for a long time. Sorry, I don't want to assume that you're surprised. I'll say this. Um, no, 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 by all means. Uh, well, let me, let me tell you this. She, she's always been quiet. She's always been interested in what you're doing. She's never really crystallized into her final form, if you will. So she's mm -hmm. been tinkery. She's been, she knows sword work. She, she, she's mean on a bow. She, like, she could, she could be an adventurer, but she could have gone into the scholar side, but she's also kind of a tinkerer. So this is the first time mm -hmm. you've seen the tinkerer in her really crystallize. Um, it, this right. is also the first time I think you, you sort of step, you can step back and look at her. She's in perfect form, right? She's got, right. she's got muscle. She's ready. She, she's ready to go. Like, uh, she, yeah. the only thing she's lacking is experience. Would you say that would surprise you or not? Like how much have you been away? Do you come home for every harvest festival? I, I don't know what you'd see there. I, I agree. Yeah. I think that, uh, he tries to get home for most harvest festivals. And I, and I like the idea that this is the first one he's come back and seen her really in, in good physical form that like, and again, I, I, I like to think of Vera as um, more, she's one of the first ones who's taking it, who's taken a strong interest and doesn't have an interest, doesn't just have an interest, but shows some aptitude for uh, arcane as well and being yes. able to implement. So oh, I forgot when about Vance that. Yeah. sees this crystal, yeah. yeah, when Vance sees this crystal, he goes, crap, you know, how, I, I guess it's some kind of power source. He sees the, the the mechanisms and the tinkering and and how this thing moves and how this thing orients itself and he's going to explore that in a moment. Yes. Um, but when he sees the crystal and sees her able to manipulate and power it up and, and understand that, he thinks like this is where her expertise comes in. This is where yeah. she shines. This is where I. Well, this is a this is a hole I can't fill. And she. So that's that's it, exciting to him. One of the things you get from that too is when she's you know, monologuing about what she did with this, she's touching on the mechanical points that you understand, right? But she's also slipping in um, uh, uh, comments about auras and energy and, and energy pads right. and connection points. And she did this and this lit up, which revealed these different things. And she noticed that they were options if she connected this to this, and that's a mechanical thing, and then did this other thing, and that's more arcane, then this would happen. And this was yeah. the combination she needed to get to to get this guy that walks uh, in a direction. He walked in a circle for a while. He used to smoke. 
um, when she turned him mm-hmm. on. Another time he vibrated yeah. strangely. Another time yeah. weird little arcs of pink energy came out of him, and that was really weird. She she could taste yeah. sound for a while after that. She didn't mm. like that. Things like that. She so a lot of this is yes mechanical, right? The uh, but yeah. most of it sounds more arcane, and she sounds very knowledgeable. She references some books that she's been. Um, getting from out of town, she's talking uh, with uh, one of her, let's say, one of your other sisters about um, the the study she's doing. It's really helping Vera with her arcane stuff. Um, I don't think she hides mm-hmm. the arcane thing, but I also don't think this, the 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 family is like super celebrating it. It's just one more thing their kids yeah. are doing. They support it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I love well, that. I really like that, and um, I like this idea. And, and he sees that excitement, and it and there's elements of that where he feels very proud. Not um, because again, like like we had touched on before, I think this is w- watching someone who he has seen grow up come into their own space and really and and occupy that and they both now have this joint curiosity about well where's it going to go mm-hmm. and so he sees her excitement he he's he's very he feels that moment of pride he goes all right well listen if we're going to do this because we're going to do this i've not even unpacked yet there's a couple of things we need to figure out okay first of all she pulls out a pad of paper when, she's ready to take notes all right and he's he even pulls out his as well, and he and and they start in on this thing. So he takes off his he takes off his trench coat. He takes off the the, yeah. the sort of armament that he has on, and you see underneath is just sort of just kind of like dirty sweat matted tunic. But he doesn't yeah. matter. This he doesn't care. She doesn't care. She takes up. She scoops a starts. bunch. She scoops a bunch of books off a chair. She sits yeah. down. Yeah. Research montage. So mm-hmm. the first thing he wants <laughs> to know is he's, he's talking to her about it, and he's like, "So when you started it up, it did this thing where it kind of." Uh, Turn to one end and turn to another. It looks like it's it's calibrating to something. Orienting, like yeah. To orient I really think it's orienting. Have you out what's it? What's the device in there that's uh, being activated? Is it using its eye? Is is uh and and what's it seeing that we're not? Is it aligning itself with the magnetic poles and trying to figure out that? That's I think the first thing we need to understand. And she says, I, actually, that that's something I've looked into. There are magnets inside. I do think there's something with the magnet, uh, with the magnetic pole. But there's another thing in there that looks kind of like the magnets, but doesn't seem oh. to be magnetic at all. And that's what seems to be the thing. If you take and and she shows you that that it looks like a solid metal ball, but when when she points it out, there's a seam. Yeah. She says you can actually take the the lid off, and she does. Um, she sits him up, uh, takes the lid off. She's pointing at yeah. the things that she's, and she's like, do you see this right here? I don't know what kind of stone that is, but it seems to be closer in composition to this crystal than anything else, but it's, it's just a stone. But if you, if you turn them on, you can see this whole mechanism here rocking back and forth. And that's what's connected to like the, the legs and the arms, right? That seems to be oh. what's orienting and you probably can't see it, but there's a, there's sort of a, a pink wash that, that, uh, gets reflected on the ground into the steps he's going to take. And as he takes a step, oh. it like lights up. It's very interesting, but it only extends about maybe a foot in front of him. So it, and, but it always seems to be going in the same direction. And she starts getting into the, um, into the uh, uh, measurements she's done to, you know, orient Northeast West kind of thing. Perfect. Yeah. And she says, it seems to be going up into the mountains. Interesting. And, uh, well, the mountains could be full of more. Have you tested if that little uh, ball there does it? It's, it's clearly orienting to the crystal in some way and then yes. orienting to its external yes, the, environment. The crystal um, itself, she's like, look at all of these attachments. It seems to be driving a, a couple of different pieces, which is kind of interesting. And you can't see these other arcane attachments, which are even more fascinating. Then she goes down a deep, dark tube of of uh, the different connection things she tried and this other thing that happened this one time. And yeah, she's excited. Well... There is a, the second thing we have to solve then, it, first of all, is that little orienting device, not the crystal itself, well, we could test the crystal itself, is that device magnetic itself or no? Is that this, the, is... this piece here is not magnetic. You see it's arranged with the magnets. These two are magnets, definitely. She picks up a, like a metal mm. stick, basically, and she touches both, and you can see it zip to each of them, like the, like the magnetic connection. And she right. says, but this one, and she taps it, and a musical tone sounds, and it sounds like ceramics. Oh. She looks at you, and she's like, sounds like ceramic, doesn't it? But it's not. Watch. And she kind of, she gets out another tool, and she pries it out of there, and she takes it, and she grins at you, and she chucks it at the floor as hard as she can. A ceramic would shatter into a million pieces, but this right. bounces back up into her hand like it's made out of rubber, and then she hands it to you. That is 
fascinating. It, wow, it, and he's going to do a little one where he goes against the wall and it, does it. It comes and, yeah, straight so. back. And it's it's not a sphere. It's kind of a, it looks like a rock you pick up outside. It's it's an unusual shape. But every time you check it at something, it zips straight back to you in a straight line. Straight back. It mm-hmm. doesn't. Wow. So this thing is uh, not even bound by the same physical properties that we might consider It's also essential. warm. Yeah. Fascinating. Not hot. All it's, right. it's warm. Yeah. Crystal, orient, orienting device, create a direction. Yeah. Present, they can feel it. Yeah. Well, we need a means of uh, speeding up its transport. I imagine if we're going to follow this thing on foot, it's going to take us quite a while, but it's headed towards the mountains, you said, right? Yes, yes. I think I think what we could do, because I can see the direction that it's pointing in, I think if we take horses or a cart or something, I'll just uh, plug them into a harness, and she actually sort of sheepishly picks up a harness that she's been creating, um, and it's it's not quite done yet. Um, it looks like, or it looks like maybe she took it apart to clean it or something, but it's a snug little thing that she can pop him into and his legs and hands are free and his eye can see forward, but he's very snug. She could get into a fight and he's right on her chest in a way that, um, it actually is a part of her armor. She's incorporated it because she takes a Excellent. knife and she goes, watch, and she tries to stab the thing and it just shings right <laughs> off and it leaves like a very small scratch and she takes a buffing rag and she buffs it. It's gone. Vera, this is fantastic. You're already one step ahead. So we take a couple of horses, we roll we roll out to the mountains, we see where this thing is going. At the very least, we can cover a good distance between ourselves, figure out uh, figure out what this thing might be uh, pointing towards, and hope it's somewhere close. If it's somewhere farther, well, I may have just made a friend recently who might be able to uh, get us a considerable distance farther. Uh, you've heard of Captain Torben Darkman, and he, he kind of goes into a part of the story again of how mm-hmm. they had made friends with a with an owner of an airship. I don't know mm-hmm. if that's a thing in your world. It is now. Totally cool. <laughs> no, I love it. I love airships. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he's like, so it's possible this thing might be headed as you know, far as uh, you know the ice caps of the north. I mean, we we can presumably follow this if uh, it seems to have some. Have you done your magic thingy or not? try to understand what, what the nature of this thing is. I mean, it's got some kind of pink electricity that seems to spark off of it, but I, uh... She literally, in perfect little sister form, rolls her eyes at you, because you were trying to talk <laughs> about a space that you know nothing about, and oh my god. So she, um, she, uh, she says, um, as far as its nature goes, she gets a little more, um, official or professional she says as far right, as its nature right. goes it seems to um it seems to be sort of like a worker bee um uh, most of the pieces i replaced uh were not um it did not seem to be unique to the device like this leg is just a leg you know and the connections are just connections the two pieces mm-hmm. that i think are the most important are this orienting piece and this crystal piece they drive a lot of the different things in this but it, as you can mm-hmm. see like he's very simple he's not a warrior you know he's not a protector um, and a lot of this, the the spells that seem to be coming back to life, and she gets really interested at that point because to mm-hmm. her, spells look like code written in light. Um, yeah. And yeah. Um, so for her, her spells are very much something that she can write down and then sort of tap. And then in her mind, it co- it floats up into space in her color energy, and she, can impl- and she sort of imprints it onto her devices. So a lot of her devices have yeah. runes and stuff that aren't really runes, mm-hmm. but like different she's got like her own little runic language kind of thing that she uses. Right. And that's what calls in, into being her spells. Right. And she says, right. so that the spells that we're seeing, um, that I'm seeing on this little guy are things I've never seen before. Sorry, back up. Hmm. Other people's spells also look like written things. Even if there's something that they I just, see. they think out loud, they show up in a text for her. That's how she sees them. So she says the spells that seem to be, almost seem to be drifting back to this guy and filling, you can see, I can, well, I can see the gaps in them and they seem to be filling in over time. They don't fill in over time if he's off, but if I leave him on for a long time, I can actually see the pieces drifting in. Anyway, those spells seem to be a lot of um, uh, direction uh, related, and I don't know if that's because he's really far away from where he's meant to be, uh, but the mm-hmm. the stuff underneath it that's not filled in yet seems to be sort of a worker bee type thing. He seems to be meant to work in concert with others of his kind, which is very exciting. Can you imagine a whole place filled with these things? And she just gets really excited. Or who made all of these things? And actually, on that note, Vance, you know, knows he's he's a he's a 
part of a lot of his knowledge comes from his knowledge of history. Does he know like the, he's, he's going to examine this thing a little bit more, looking for particular forms of writing or signs of craftsmanship? Roll does me he, does he able a to... history check. Yay! I love history checks. They're my favorites. Ooh, that's pretty good. Uh, so actually, I should ask now, what form of um, what what level is is Vance here? We we, we discussed uh, one, three, or five. Let's um, call him level five. I think that's a change I'm going to make with cool. branches and dragons. Just make them all level five because that's that's an interesting Great. time period in a character. Unless somebody's like, no, I must be level one. Let's call him five. He's <laughs> he's got some. What actually? What level are you in Lee's campaign? Uh, he's level four. So when they start that, so it's potentially. Yeah. Or he comes back I, from this whole I will, arc. I will not say that you're level five in Lee's campaign. But yeah, let's just call it level five for now. <laughs> exactly. Loop it around, make it easier for transitions. But yeah. that was a uh, that was a twenty three to his history check. A twenty three? Perfect. Okay. Yes. Um I want to make something up, but I need a bio break. So uh cool. five, ten minutes. Which would you rather? You need a longer one or a shorter one? Um I can do a I can do a five minute. I'll pop back on here around five minutes. Okay. And, um, so stream stream. Yeah, whenever you're ready. Stream stream. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna throw up a be right back screen. I promise we will be cool. right back. Um, there won't be any music because I haven't worked that out yet. So it'll be quiet. I'm very sorry. I promise we'll be back. If you have any questions, <laughs> drop them in chat and I'll respond when I get back. Um, and uh, yeah, we will be right back. We'll be back for about an hour, I think, as we've got about an hour left, so. um, which makes me cool. sad because I, I want to keep playing this. But okay, so we will we'll be back uh, just before the top of the hour. Thank you, stream stream. Great.
unmuting. Yes, hello, stream stream. We are back. <laughs> um, thank you for that dance break. Yes, that's very important that we have dance breaks. Okay. So I think we left it with, um, you mentioned uh, a friend of yours was the captain of an airship. You mentioned getting started. Now, are you going to wait until the Harvest Festival is over? Or are you going to head out tonight? Uh, I guess we'll have to wait till the festival is over. Something like this doesn't need to happen immediately. Oh, but, yes. Uh, we should... Mother would kill should, us. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, be best do this without drawing any suspicion to ourselves if we decide to go ride horses for a day or two. Nobody will blink an eye at it. Uh, brother, I don't think we're going to be gone for a day or two. I think we're going to be gone for a while. Like one of your adventures. I want it to be like one of your adventures. I want to go see things. I think it will be, uh, Little Sparrow, but uh, let's just tell the family it'll be for a week or two, and if it happens to be, or a day or two, and if it happens to be longer, you know, better to ask for forgiveness than permission, I think. She sighs very heavily and says, fine, that will give me time to finish up the harness. I also want to see if I can turn off the, the, this mm. mode of his so I can see if I can manipulate the worker spells to do things for me. Of course. Oh, well, that... <laughs> Well, uh, let's just say I'll, I'll watch your back while you're doing that. How about yes. that? So um, <laughs> let's fast forward through the Harvest Festival. You spend a week of lots cool. of eating, drinking, dancing, games, family stuff. There's there's um, other families that you, you do things with. Um, there are, there's probably, um, I forgot to ask uh, what your pro, uh, Vance's pronouns were early on. I apologize. Are we using he, him? Oh, no, no, no problem. He is he, him. Yes. Okay. Um, and, and there's probably a couple of younger people around your age that are trying to flirt with you and stuff because you're the, the great adventuring son and blah, blah, blah. Um, there's your typical aunts being like, Lenny, you gotta settle down and stupid stuff like that. <laughs> um, grandma's still around and she super approves of what you're doing and, and does that by like mm -hmm. slipping you little like gifts of money and stuff. But they're, they're weird sure. amounts, right? Like here's five copper and here's a silver and here's mm -hmm. a, here's mm -hmm. what I thought was a coin, but was really a candy and stuff like that. <laughs> um, so while you're being the dutiful son, Vera's going to be up in her room a lot to the point where like the mom and the aunts are like, get down here. And she's like, cutting all the time. Um, and she, she, she checks in with you to be like, this is this done. And she, so she shows you like pockets she's added to her outfit and, um, tools mm -hmm. that she wants to bring with her, but they're delicate. So she created a case for those and it's very, you, you know, intricate. It has this magic involved because she can't make anything without magic and, and stuff like that. So that's the week y'all have. And then you get to the end of the harvest week. And um, I think your father is going to turn to you. This is the last evening of, uh, of, the, of the harvest festival. And it's always, mm -hmm. it's always an evening of just family, immediate family. So it's just you and your right. seven siblings and your, uh, right. or your six siblings and your, your mom and dad. And your dad's going to turn to you and say, well, Vance, when are you heading out again? Uh, are you going to stick around for a while? Or you got another adventure lined up, son? Actually, uh... Judy Coles, and, um, <clears throat> you know, this will be anticipated to be a rather short trip, but uh, I was hoping uh, Vera could actually accompany me on this one. Uh, turns out I'll be dealing with uh, some sort of magical folk, and I'd like an uh, expert opinion in the room when we're uh, having our chats. The parents do that thing where they trade looks and so many things are said, and he says, well, now... And the mom jumps in and says, Vera has been ready for an adventure for quite a long time. And she's more talking to the dad, as we know. And she turns to you and she says, and frankly, there just isn't enough in this town to engage her around the arcane. She really does need to explore that more. And she turns back to the father. I would feel much better about it if she were accompanied by her big brother. And the father's like, yeah, but she's my little girl. And Vera's like, dad, you know, and this, like trying to look adult and stuff. But, and he, he chuckles and says, well, all right. I, uh, uh, Vera was, can we say Vera was born around harvest time? So it would be her birthing day yeah, soon. Yeah. And he says, yeah. well, I was going to make a gift of this, but, uh, um, your mother and I got you a, a new horse that would probably be better for you adventuring types. We, uh, we took notes when Vance got his steed and well, you, you, she's out, she's out in the yard already. Vera squeals and runs out. Um, and, uh, so you're left alone. As with, she runs out, I'll, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll pat, I'll pat my dad on, on the back and say, mm -hmm. dad, I promise I'm going to look after her. Pretend like it's you watching her there. Well, you, but 
someone who, and he you, says, with, who's considerably more skilled with sharp objects. He says, so. no, no, I'll pretend it's, it's, uh, he says, I'll pretend it's my dad who was the adventuring type. And then he, he stops and he says, no, son, I'm not going to pretend it was my dad. I'm going to trust you. You are good with that dang sharp sticker. And if anyone's going to protect Vera, it's going to be you. Uh, and he, he gets a little teary eyed about it, right? Like he believes in you enough that, yeah. you know, for this and the mom whaps you both on the back of the head and says, if you don't bring her back in one piece, I'll have your liver and then starts cleaning up. <laughs> oh, I think she's the sharpest one. one the one that's most skilled out of any of us with a sharp stick. That's for sure. And my dad chuckles. And, At the moment, Vance very much, uh, hides behind a facade of, uh, intellectual curiosity and, uh, confidence in his physical abilities and mm-hmm. there was that moment where his dad had said that to him that it kind of brought him all home and he felt like that kind of had that flashback of that little kid you know watching his grandfather work and, and the things that excited him about this whole path that he's chosen and it just kind of brought him back in a moment and then he his thoughts trail you know as he thinks back on vera who's outside getting her first horse and is it is yeah. extremely um you know livid about it there's a lot of uh i guess what's Nostalgia isn't quite the right word. It's that feeling when you're watching someone experience an experience that you similarly experienced, but you're watching it through a different lens, and there's that sort of, like, almost an, a sort of uh, extremely present, but also, I, like, yeah. present in your your past, present, and future kind of feeling. Yeah, I know what sure you're talking about. It's a weird, it's a weird lens where like you can remember your f- excitement at your first horse and your excitement on your first adventure and it's stuff you haven't thought about for years because you've been doing this for a while and, and that kind of thing layered over like protectiveness because it's your sister and like keen interest in what she'll do with it because obviously she'll take a different path and it, yeah, I mean, maybe a little bit of excitement that you get to do this with her and you'd never... I don't know. Did, had you ever, have you grown up thinking if Vera goes adventuring, she showed signs of that, that at an early age, I'll show her the ropes or had you never thought of that? And it's just, you're it's just occurring to you and that you're excited now. What do you think? I think, I think he always thought one day uh, that he would, but then, you know, something happened in this last year since he's been home. Mm-hmm. And I think that she grew up much faster than he anticipated. Ah, and yes. He saw her. Yeah. And so there's that like, wow, that day is that's, right that's now. Today. Yeah. Love it. Okay. So, so um, your mom, as she's picking up plates and stuff and, and poking the, the, the other siblings to clean up after themselves, she says, so when are you thinking about heading out, Vance? We, we love having you here, but uh, if, you've got, if you've got something you got to go do, of course. I just want to know when to make up some packs for you. Well, you know, that uh, horse in the stable there, that Vera's new horse is looking pretty restless. So I think we set out at dawn tomorrow. And, uh, yeah, because probably your parents had you check Vera's horse. Like, we, we bought this for your sister. She seems restless, yeah. you know. So you've seen it. It's a good <laughs> horse. Um, right, right. And she says, well, all right. If you could wait till morning, we'll, we'll make up some leftovers. God, you know, God's know we've got them. And I'll make sure you've got something for the next couple of days at least and some, some good travel food. Does that sound all right, son? Well, couldn't thank you enough. Nothing like a little bit of home cooking for the road. That's for sure. Of course, and uh, so she bustles off. She's going to start getting that done. Um, this is this is familiar to you. Whenever you come home, she always sends you off with food. Um, uh, someone in your family a long time ago came up with some sort, sort of pack that tends to make it preserve longer for whatever scientific reason that is reasonable right. in this kind of world. Um, so things stay fresh a little bit longer. A bag of colding, we'll call it. A bag of colding. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. Um, I will credit Critical Role for that, by the way. That I've never something. heard of that. I don't. I. I. I am fringe Critical Role, but that is. I got a chuckle out of that. Okay. <laughs> um. So yeah. So uh, anything you want to do before the next morning, or are you ready to to just chat about the the road you're going to take? I think he. You know. Um, again, this is separate from from Lee's story and things like that, but mm-hmm. he he always loves to tinker with his devices and think mm-hmm. about things that he can improve upon. And he recalls when he had to leap between two airships in order to become effective. And he thought, well, yeah. you know, I've got a, he, he knows he's got his grappling hook and mm-hmm. he can grapple people from a distance or, or grapple an object and use that to pull or swing or do what he needs to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but he thought, you know, maybe if I can at least 
create some impact if let's say something's flying overhead. Mm -hmm. So he starts to fidget with his deployable shield. Mm -hmm. He's very proud of this. This is the first thing he ever worked on. Um, this was sort of the a prototype that his grandfather had created, but the, while the concept seems simple enough, it's actually very difficult to store that much material in a small space and get it to where it'll you know, pop out and then spin into this large and durable object. Mm -hmm. um, so he's very proud of this, but he starts looking into or experimenting with the idea that if he were to swing his arm, and because we were talking about magnets today too and looking at the magnetism mm -hmm. within this little automaton. So mm -hmm. he starts thinking about, well, is there a way that I can perhaps temporarily connect this shield by a magnet and I can disable the magnet for a time and if I swing my arm in the right arc, I can create enough leverage to throw the shield like a disc. Ooh, and okay. he's like, would that be like, and so he starts thinking about that and starts taking notes and seeing what kind of augments he would have to make to his deployable shield in order for that to work. Um, you know, the idea of a, of, a, of a magnet that can be switched on and off, which means he would have to now employ some, instead of, you know, more um, kinetic energy contraptions that he's got going on in it, yeah. um, where it's able to store and release kinetic energy and that's how it, how it deploys the shield in the first place combined with strings mm -hmm. um or springs i should say yeah springs yeah um, but instead now having an electrical current that can perhaps turn on and turn off the magnetic capability so how would he go about implementing that mm -hmm. so he just starts thinking about that taking notes and starts um you know uses the the resources of the wardon compendium oh, vast to, libraries yeah yeah exactly just just to be able to take a couple of notes some equations regarding you know, laws of electricity and resistivity and, and various things that he would have to implement into the, uh, into the device. Yeah, I, I really like that idea. I, I also really like that the compendium is not just a single, it cannot be a single um, book. It's got to be several. And I'm imagining oh, yeah. that they've got themes, right? Like the, the ones with the green covers are all, you know, bio related. And these ones all deal with engineering and these ones are bioengineering and like different stuff like that totally yeah, totally i really and like that idea things things that have certainly been authored by others and and things that are authored by the mordon family themselves that uh sort of create a synthesis of knowledge that is from a variety of subjects and so um, if we put this in the past in a zinlia then i can have those books show up in one of my other campaigns that the artificers in and he can actually pull from those ooh, which would be kind of interesting that would be cool yeah yeah that would be very cool yeah that could be interesting okay uh, yeah okay so you're tinkering um i'll let you i'll let you talk to your other gm about whether or not she'll let you do that uh but i sure. really like the idea <laughs> um this is kind of interesting here where we've got you on the road and I can't, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm having trouble thinking of a, oh, you had asked me something. Oh, you yeah. I completely skipped this. I'm so sorry. So before no the dinner and all of that stuff, you're looking at this, you rolled a 23 on history. Yes. Oh yeah. I completely forgot about it too. <laughs> you. You recognize. As she's been going over this, she says there are a couple of scratches I couldn't get out. And um, mm. you actually recognize an emblem that really just looks like scratches. But it's actually mm. a rumored, it's an emblem associated with a rumor, myth, legend type thing Ooh. that you ran across a couple times when you were in your studies, um, specifically mm -hmm. around, uh, around automatons. Um, okay. And you were never able to find a lot of information around it. I will say, mm. uh, because I don't want to fill in too much in uh, your other GM's no, world. No, totally. But let's yep. say, let's say there was there was a, a being, a person, way back when that was totally advanced in years, and um, the legends around the stuff he 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 or she made was just literally legendary. Like, there's no way that could still possibly exist. Mm -hmm. um, and. Um, let's say if, if you ever went to a kind of school, like it, it ended up being a, like a joke. Like if you, if you were trying to make something that couldn't possibly work, they'd make jokes about, Oh, are you trying to be like, you know, so-and-so I don't want to sure. name them either. Cause I don't want to name anybody in, in Lee's world, but no, no, totally. This um, is great. 
uh, and the the name has probably changed quite a bit over the 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 years and whatnot. But um, um, okay, if if you do, Lee says you're welcome to, um, then I'm gonna plug this into Azinlia. You uh, the the name behind the name is is ever changing, but people know him as okay. the architect. Ah. That's the uh, that's the emblem you've run across. Um, uh, that's that's about all you know at this point. But it's always, if you'd like, it can be something you've always wanted to pursue more, or it can be like well, an idle curiosity, or you know, what are you thinking? So it's it's funny you said that because one of the first things I told my SO about this, which is she has this um, warforged. This is what he was describing to um, his sister. Yeah. This sort of beautiful automaton that's blending this fluidity of technology and magic mm -hmm. and um it has always been this is one of the first things i said about it is he, he's always wanted to create an automaton um one it, it's sort of been like you know of all the projects that he has all of these typically are, are designed to augment the armor that he wears to make him do better at his job which is to collect and observe and um sometimes you know get himself through dangerous situations in order to do that um the automaton idea is the acknowledgement of his own mortality that one day he will not physically be able to do this and he saw his grandfather go through the same thing mm. and he wants something to be able to carry on his work mm. um and so this is the uh, this is sort of a, a a vision that he has a long going project that he has going on so it's not surprising at all that he would be researching potential connections to automatons, people who have done it before, and that coming across this architect is something that has been extremely a curiosity for him. One that's sort of, a, like you said, that very, very far-reaching yeah. dream. Yeah, exactly. Love it. Okay. Very that, cool. That sounds fantastic. I love it when things just tie in like that. You know, it, sounds, that's, it seems to happen all the time with D&D. It's kind of crazy. When you're open-minded enough, I think I think it really can, you know. And one of the things yeah. I love about Azinlia is that I I have control over it and can just be like, yes, this is how it is now. And Lee and Chat said we can always change if necessary. So it sounds like she's setting up her world the same way, right? Like, you know, we Hunter, you and I could never speak again, and you and Lee can do whatever <laughs> you want with this, and it it could be fine, you know. Yeah. I I'm yeah. not. Um, I don't I don't mean this the way it sounds, but I I, do, I am not precious about about different things in my world. I, I want to change yeah. them. I want to retcon them. I want to manipulate them so that they tell a better story. So I love it when this kind of I thing think happens. When I, yeah. When I first got into DMing, I definitely was more protective of like, I found I was just more no oriented, which is really surprising. And so I found when I had different people come into my games and go, I want to make a Dragonborn. I want to make a Warforged. I want to mm -hmm. make this. And these are things I hadn't considered before. I just realized as I made the space for that, it's like my world became more alive. It became yeah. more breathing. And knowing, knowing Lee, she's not like, this can't happen. She's sitting there watching this and going like, this is cool. You know what? This gives this me could. inspiration to go yeah. in this direction. Yeah, so, yeah. That is yeah. one of the things I love about your sister. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. So um, knowing that uh, you are you are yeah. very motivated to go off on this. Um, the, the problem I'm having is we have a limited amount of time. Lee says, totally not doing that or taking notes. We have a, <laughs> nope. Um, we have a limited amount of time and I can, I've already imagined a short adventure, but we don't have time for it. Uh, I can't do it in about 30 minutes. Um, so this is actually, well, I was going to ask if you wanted to do that. This is actually a decent stopping spot. We could pick up with yeah. the, you have headed out kind of thing. It's a little against brunches and that um, I've already started imagining what the next bit is, but you know what? I don't care. It's a new year. Who cares? I can do what I want with my stream. So if you're, if you're up for it, I'd love to schedule another one of these. Um, and if, if this Definitely. is a decent stopping point, if there's anything you want to cover before we stop, knowing that we'll do an, an, uh, a part two, happy to hear about that as well. I think I think we touched on it. I think I like the ideas. Uh, you know, you're you're a great collaborative storyteller, by the way. Really good at feeding off of information and and bringing new insights and perspectives. It's really great. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I've got this page of notes here, and we've we've fleshed out his relationship with his sister, and you've added some really cool elements with his family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I come from a bit of a dysfunctional uh, parental family. Uh, 
myself. So it's really nice to embody a character where that's a, it not as per, it's nothing's perfect, but it's nice to have that sort of relationship there. Yeah. Um, I love yeah, to, I love to cool. play with those relationships because I myself came from a dysfunctional family, but I was adopted in my mm-hmm. late teens by this, just mm-hmm. the most wonderful parents. <laughs> Um, but they're not perfect either, right? Like nobody is. So I really right. love playing through parents that are A, alive, and B, not tragically yeah. horrible to their children. And exactly. occasionally my <laughs> players let me do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is, it's really great. So I think this is a perfect stopping point and I'm happy to pick this up again. Um, that way, like I said, out of the spirit of, Dungeons, of uh, Brunches and Dragons. However, it, it, it's uh, sometimes you get a good bite of something and you need yeah. to chew it for a second before yeah. uh, you take the next one. So and sometimes yeah. I can I'm wrap good. up a short thing in a in a little a little session too. So it's this isn't always yeah. the the norm. But um, okay, so we'll go ahead and pause here. We'll pick back up next time when we we can get something on the calendar with um, with the adventure. I will, in the spirit of brunches, not plan out any maps or anything. We'll do this theater of mind. Great. Um, yep. What I'll probably do is, is uh, you mentioned, I think before we started streaming, sort of a recipe for a dungeon. I'll probably explore that concept in the, the mind of brunches. Yeah. That's not nor- normally how I run these, but um, that'll be kind of interesting for me. That'll be a, a, the experiment uh, piece for brunches. Um, totally. Okay, so I think we've wrapped up that. I think I've captured everything that I need to capture, although for a part two, I'll reach out to you ahead of time so I can be like, this is what I remember, and this is the direction I think right. we're going in. So we'll keep you yeah. in there. And uh, yeah, okay. Uh, it looks like Luthera says good hoodie. Oh yeah, you're wearing the um, the collaboration with Table Titans and uh, Game to Grow. So I'm actually I the, just... yeah, I'm the volunteer coordinator oh. for Game to Grow. And I absolutely really? love their mission, yes. Um, when I first, uh, that, that hoodie used to be blue with white, uh, with the the dice in white, and I was like, "You, uh, you gotta use rainbows, dude." And he was like, I, I, "I, he was like, I don't know if it'll sell." And I was like, "Collaborate with like a pride or a neurodiverse group like yep. Game to Grow or the the LGBT people, yep. and you'll sell a million of them." And if I'll, I'm sure I was not the only person who made this suggestion. I am sure. So, but they made them, and I was just <laughs> so excited. Um, Game to Grow is a uh, I I should know this. Uh, uh, I should know more. I should be able to speak more about this. But the thing that I love about Game to Grow <laughs> is they use Dungeons and Dragons and other games to teach kids social skills. Um, yeah. And specifically as an autistic, I wish to all that is shiny that somebody had taught me social skills with a game when I was a kid. That would have been awesome. I learned it very painfully. Um, Luthera also says, haven't gotten to Idris's parents yet. I do. That's going to be great. I, you know, I didn't see those come in, so I don't know what he was referring to there. Idris is his character in Shift that is also uh, mm. let's not kill monsters, let's understand them, but not from a tinker standpoint. Oh, nice. his, his is more as a, of a druidic standpoint. So that oh, um, nice. there there might be a way I can weave this in as well. Perhaps perhaps um, some of the compendium ended up in his, his uh, education. Some of the compendium ended up in yeah. Zat's, the artificer's education, and Idris and Zat's have a a contentious relationship show it'd be really funny if they're like no uh and then they whip out the same book that would be hilarious right <laughs> lee says she got you that hoodie so that's good on you i love i love that kind of thing did, yes yes she did i was gonna credit uh credit we, her that, we so. all have to join up at a pack someday i'm writing some right. um one hour adventures that i can use in lines and stuff we'll all have to show up and and, and do that that would be fun Okay, so this is uh, this is the end of the stream. Um, uh, what I usually like to do with my guests is uh, let them explain if there's anything um, anywhere that people can find them offline, either a way to, you know, way to continue a conversation with you, or any streams you might be guesting in, or you might be running yourself. Is there anything like that you'd like to share? Otherwise, I can jump into what I've got. Unfortunately, I don't have much of an internet presence uh, these days. I, I had I departed from the social media realm uh, quite a, uh, about a little over a year ago, and I not been back since uh but you know if you wish to find me uh, it can be very good for mental really health <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly uh especially during those those times that we were in at the moment um but i suppose if anybody wishes to find me uh you know i'm i'm in discord and i suppose if spoon you you can say yeah. yes or no but if they if they if you can contact you perhaps if you want to you contact can, oh me. yes uh, yes i i would okay. be happy to do that i'm like seven spoon on twitter you can always reach out to me if you have a question for hunter and i'm happy to pass it along i'm happy to connect people i love co- connecting people i've i there did i did a little bit of that over the break so yeah happy to do that okay excellent 
Excellent. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so you can find me. Uh, let's see. The one shot I'm in this afternoon, which is Harry Potter themed, but adult, uh, not sexy times adult, just adults. Um, is um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I realize adult has that weird connotation, so I have to qualify, but I don't think that one's streamed, actually. I don't think that's going to be streamed. Um, let's see. My Monday game is not streamed. Tuesday, Treasure Tuesday, I think we'll be back with that. We're in a very interesting period mm -hmm. with uh, one of the players. We're investigating a backstory and there are feelings. Mm -hmm. There are so many feelings in Treasure Tuesday and my players play them really well and I end up sitting there a lot wa like watching a tennis match where I'm like looking from camera to camera and being mm -hmm. like, oh my god, feelings. So that'll be Tuesday. Yeah, I think Broken Bane is going to be de back next Saturday, which is a, is a very fun campaign. And they're about to head down into the caverns of Warnir. I come mm -hmm. up with weird names. And that should be very interesting. There's some broken magical looms that they need to fix. Mm -hmm. uh, like weaving. I made that up on the spot. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That was a weird thing to, to visualize, by the way. I was like, they, the town needs a product. And it's going to be weaving. Because that was the thing I just read in a book I was reading. So, um, well, It's very cool. I, and it's very understandable especially when you're dealing with ley lines and the, the, that yeah, concept yeah. of magic right yeah. you're weaving these things we, together yep totally. I dig it. you're you're doing spoilers by accident but yeah i'm very excited about that i am very bad if um uh if somebody mentions something that ends up like i don't have to comment on it but i always do and so when i'm in my games i'll start to i'll start to explain something and my husband or someone else will be like you don't have to explain it you can just leave it unsaid we can discover it and i'm like but it's so cool anyway Exactly. Um, so there's, uh, yeah, so Broken Bane. And then I am happy to say that I've got somebody lined up for every single Sunday in January, uh, for Brunches awesome. and Dragons. Wow. Uh, I went out Thanks on a, uh, no, you, you were my first one. I, we had to reschedule, so I really wanted to get you in first, but yeah. over break, I, I went a little, uh, I, I, I went a little bold and I reached out to some individuals that I, I really don't think have time for, for to play with me. And a couple of them actually do uh want to want to do this and so i'm a little intimidated nice. you'll have to watch and, and participate in chat to make me feel better because you and i know, know each other now. and um it should be kind of fun so we'll definitely get bounced yeah. back on the books and uh yeah i'm cool. very much looking forward to this so as i've said before like seven spoon seven is spelled out not the number um and you can find me on twitter and i'm happy to connect you with any humans that i happen to have a connection with or chat with you about D D. Um, I've also been streaming a lot of Spirit Fair lately, which is a, a PC game about death, but it's very Stardew Valley, and I talk a lot about D&D &D and, and uh, disabilities in there. So if you want to listen to some gorgeous music, look at some pretty graphics, and me babble, very cool. you can join that stream as well. <laughs> All right, um, we will say, I think, I think we're ready to say goodbye stream stream. If you don't have anything else, Hunter, are you good? I think so. This was a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, I'm really I glad had to see the story goes. I had a fantastic time. I'm very much looking forward to the next one. Okay, stream stream. We're gonna say bye bye. Bye bye, stream stream. Bye. -bye.